Hey, welcome everyone. I'm Jamie Lewis, and today we're gonna be checking out this studio-based compressor by Seymour Duncan. And the only thing I wanna know is what does it sound like? <laughs> Now, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to Zounds for loaning me this pedal for this demo. So if you like what you hear today, please click on that link in the description. You can go get one for yourself and I'll be up front with you. Yes, I get a very small commission out of it. So thank you in advance for helping to support this channel. Right. Now, one thing that we commonly use compression for is when we're playing slap bass because it just sounds awesome. So let's go ahead and start there. I'm going to play an example that's going to go back and forth between a dry, unaffected bass tone and then one that's running through this studio bass compressor. By the way, here's a quick tip. If you're having a hard time distinguishing the difference between the dry signal and the compressed sound, try paying attention to the way it brings up the volume of my ghosted notes, the way it adds body and makes it sound less dull and also pulls out the percussiveness of what I'm playing. And of course, make sure you're listening on high quality headphones. Now, before we move on, let's add just a little bit of corrective EQ to this compressed signal. And also let's place it in the context of a full mix and let's see what happens. All right, let's try playing some rock music with this pedal. This next song is called Secrets by an artist named Shim Moore. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, we played this show in Omaha, Nebraska, back on a tour that we did in 2019, I think. And what I'm listening for is how can I use this compressor to get that in your face rock tone, but without being overly squashed. All right, now let's add a little bit of EQ to this compressed sound to see if we can't make that pick strike a little bit sharper and also fatten up the tone a little bit. I also like to use compression whenever I play finger funk. It's really helpful to get the articulation to just pop out of the mix with that kind of sound. And also it shines a spotlight on all the ghosted notes that I'm playing. Now let's add just a little bit of EQ to this compressed signal to see if we can't pull up the attack of this bass that's, by the way, being played with flat wound strings. And let's see if we can't get those notes to just jump out of the mix a little bit. <laughs> And last, let's just have some fun. Here's a clip from a recent performance that I did on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon when I was backing up a Dolly Parton tribute artist named Karen Hester. Let's see what this thing sounds like when I put the compressor on full blast and I squash the bass to death with a really fast attack and none of that dry signal blended in. <laughs> Just 
Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure that it just made my bass sound worse. But before we write it off, I'm going to EQ out some of those really honky mid-range frequencies that just got louder due to the massive amount of compression that we just did. And let's see if I can get a beefier, fuller tone with the combination of extremely tamed dynamics and some corrective EQ. <laughs> Not bad. So that's what the Seymour Duncan Studio Bass Compressor sounds like. Thanks again to Zounds for loaning me this pedal. And again, if you want to grab one for yourself, just click on that link that's popping up right now. You'll get a great piece of gear for a great price, and you'll also be supporting the channel at the same time. So thank you very much. And if you want to know my personal opinion about this pedal, how I think it stacks up against others, and whether or not you should have one on your pedal board, just head over to my Patreon, and you can either watch my deep dive video where I share my professional opinions about all the gear that I review, or you can just send me a DM on Patreon at any time with all the questions you have, and I'll get right back to you.